gentlemen this is mr kassarian and welcome back to arc survival evolved all right so guys um bit of an issue yeah um i lost both my dinosaurs yep yeah i got i got absolutely massacred by a monster and uh i actually lost a bit of recording time too so anyways what i'm gonna do today is a little bit different what i'm going to do i keep forgetting i don't use tab to open my inventory in this game um, what I'm going to do is we are going to work on getting some water piped into our house, all right? And then later on, we'll work on getting rid of that guy. I've also leveled up quite a bit, all right? So we'll put this guy in there, all right? And these are water irrigation pipes, so that's the intake, all right? And then I'm going to need, I think I'm going to need an inclined pipe, Um, that's a bit inclined, to be perfectly honest with you guys. I wanted, like, a, a shallower angle there, guys. Not quite that severe, maybe. Uh, let's see about a straight pipe. Uh, that is a straight pipe recipe. Let's see. That's the tap, craftables. I need pipe straight. I leveled up. Uh, I'm now level 21, as you guys can see. And, uh, yeah, so, um, good, I can actually repair that. So, yes, uh, we are going to have to retain things. I can actually make a trike saddle, but I'm probably going to save that for a future episode, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, for a bunch of reasons. Uh, the primary one at this point being that I don't especially have the resources I'm going to need to do it, all right? So let's go back to inventory, and let's get that pipe straight. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, 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 it's obstructed. What it means by is obstructed is basically, yo, you can't, you need to place this on another pipe. So, oh, that still says it's obstructed. Okay, so let's go to eight. These things always tend to look a little weird. Come on. And there we go. There we go. Yeah, it, it's one of those, like, with a non-voxel game like this, you kind of run into these sorts of weird, not really clipping issues, but you guys get what I'm saying. They're not really clipping issues. They're more... I don't know. Clipping. Uh, they're issues. Alright, they're just issues. The other thing I can make now is I can make a board. So once we get this set up, I may end up making that. Um, the refining board. The thing is, I can't actually make... And this is the pain in the neck. I can't actually make any of the... Um, I can't actually make any of the, the stuff that you make in it yet. Like the stone axe, the stone pick, etc. Because I don't have that technology yet. Right? Right. It's a little irritating. Um, so I don't have any of that stuff yet. So I can't really... No, that's not going to work. So if you want to put a climb here. Yeah, I can't make any of that stuff yet. So I don't really see the point in making the forge itself. Eh. Oh, can I not make this? Yeah. I can. There we go. What am I missing? Again, stone. Okay. Well, we can deal with that. There we go. That gave me metal. Alright, there we go. Hey there, buddy. You're eventually going to be mine, by the way. I hope you know that. Hmm. Alright, let's put this guy down. Now, what am I going to do over here? Um, do I want to have this go into the house? Well, I'd have to turn this, and I'm not too convinced of my ability to actually make it turn. I don't think I actually have the 
basically technology to do that. Um, and these trikes are so tempting. So tempting. Yeah, I lost both the trike and a turtle. Um, actually, to a um, Alpha Raptor. And uh, I killed the Alpha Raptor by swarming it to death. Basically, I just kept dying and running back here. And <laughs> grabbing the stuff to make up spear on the way and fighting for long enough that I didn't get killed. That was basically the whole way I did it. That's it. Yes, is obstructed. I understand is obstructed. If I keep going straight, I'm going to miss my house. Okay. Now, this is more of a, I want to have this because I want to have this. Not necessarily, you know, I want to, I don't know. Not necessarily because I think it's going to be insanely useful um, to have. But basically, I'm going to have this. It's going to be set up. It's going to be nice. All right. So that's that. Okay, so I need some more stone. Why don't I just pick it up off the ground now? That's not stone. I'm hot. It's raining. How am I hot? It's raining. Oh, hey, look. I got some more metal. I hadn't realized you could get metal from these things. Was that what they were talking about, about getting metal from the seashore? Apparently. Either way, I'm going to have a fair supply of metal by the time we're done with this. With all the stone I need for everything else. You don't want to hit a trike by accident, by the way. That usually ends up very badly for you. Alright, so let's lay down. Hmm, here's the thing. It's going to miss my house. Well, hmm. We just want to put the tap on right here, all right? So to put this thing on, you just drop a tap on it. Ta-da! And now we can just drink water from here rather than having to dash all the way down to, to the ocean. Nice, nice. Admittedly, I should have placed it a little bit, making a little bit more sense for myself, but I wasn't thinking that way. Okay, let's see what else we can make. Let's open this up. We can make trank arrows now. We can make trike saddles and preserving bins. I want to make a preserving bin. That's pretty cool to have. All right. Stone and wood. 30 and 30. Oh, can I make spark powder? Uh, this might be an issue. View engrams. Can I make... Nope, I can't make spark powder yet. So I'm going to have to wait until next level. Um, but we can get the preserving... No. Well... Um... Uh, Well, let's get the Refining Forge done. All right, that's probably the better idea. Okay, so let's see what else we need for the Refining Forge. All right, that's a good question. Uh, we need hide. I know we need hides. Let's pull the hide out. What else do I need for the Refining Forge? I need wood and a bunch of stone. Okay, then. You know what we can actually do? So I'm going to need to get a bunch of stone. Great. So while I'm doing this, um, I probably should fill the time a little bit. And uh, I can talk about what I've been playing lately on my tablet, which has been the Vault Dweller game by Bethesda. Um, let me describe this as a fantastic game to kill time. Um, it, it's not, I mean, it's, it's a tablet. Basically, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like, AFK games like Cookie Clicker. Similar concept, you know, it's, it's it's a game that you play for about 10-15 minutes and then you pack it up and, you know, either switch to something else or, you know, it's, I tend to play it a lot when I'm waiting for a game to load or something like that. So I'm just sitting around not really doing much, just waiting for stuff to happen. Uh, or, you know, if I'm at work and it's a really slow day, it, you know, and nothing's happening and I need something to do, you know, I'll dig it out and play for a little bit. Um... It's not, I mean, like every, like all of this, those sorts of games, it's really not something that you necessarily play, um, you know, for an hour and a half on end. It's, it's something you drag out when you just want to kill some time for a few minutes and, you know, kind of relax a little bit. Don't have to worry about it. Um, 
one of the things I'm really getting to like about it, though, is the fact that it is probably one of the best games in terms of not making you feel like you have to spend real money on it. It has microtransactions, but everything you get through microtransactions, you can also get through gameplay. Um, it, it speeds things up a little bit, but it's not... It's not a requirement to play the game well that you, you, you know, go in and pay Bethesda lots of money. I mean, let's face it, it's it's a marketing ploy. It's, it's a marketing game. They're not trying to make tons of money off this game. What they're trying to do is they're trying to bring a whole bunch of people who don't know the Fallout universe into Fallout, right? So that they go out and they buy the next Fallout game that's coming out soon, which I'll totally be dying and doing a series on, by the way. Um, I don't already have a pre-order, I swear. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge Fallout fan. Actually, I'm not just a Fallout fan. I'm kind of a Bethesda fan in general. Um, I mean, I'm one of those guys who's like, I've played every Fallout game. I've played Tactics. I've played every PC Fallout game. Let me let me rephrase that. I've played every Fallout game for the PC. Okay. I have played Fallout Tactics. Um... I actually think Fallout Tactics gets a lot more grief than Fallout Tactics deserves, okay? It is a good tactics game. The storyline is a Fallout storyline, okay? It's Fallout, guys. This universe makes no sense. There are cars that are powered by nuclear reactors, all right? We're not, we're not talking about a high physics universe here, guys. There are cars powered by nuclear reactors. Okay. Let's 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 think on that for a few seconds, all right? So, yeah. Anyways, um I enjoy the Fallout games. I I sincerely enjoy them. I also sincerely enjoy all of the a lot of the spin-off games. I enjoy Tactics. A lot of people didn't. That's your opinion? That's fine. I enjoyed it. I liked playing as the Brotherhood. Um, I think a lot of the complaint with Fallout Tactics came about because it wasn't the Brotherhood from 1 and 2. The Brotherhood from Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 were kind of jerks. They're actually much more like the Brotherhood from um, Las Vegas. Um, not Las Vegas. Fallout New Vegas. There we go. From Fallout New Vegas. They're, they're kind of standoffish. They don't trust people. They're, they have their mission, their sacred mission, and they're going to do their sacred mission, and, and that's the end of it. Uh, they're not, you know, the DC Brotherhood, but the DC Brotherhood, anyways. So the Brotherhood and Fallout Tactics is very different, because they're all about, hey, bring people into the community, expand, you know, recruit, um, recruit Wastelanders into the Brotherhood, and expand the Brotherhood, because otherwise we're not going to survive. Which is entirely accurate, they're entirely correct in that, they will not survive if they don't bring people into the Brotherhood. So the DC Brotherhood's very much the same way. Before uh, Fallout 3 came out, there was this huge issue because Fallout Tactics had this kind of happy, friendly, you know, Wastelanders, part of the Brotherhood, um, Brotherhood of Steel. And a lot of the old hands didn't like that because the Brotherhood's not supposed to be happy and friendly because that makes them seem too much like the good guys. Whereas in Fallout 3 in DC, the Brotherhood is very much the same type of Brotherhood that you saw in Fallout Tactics. Friendly, bring people in, yada yada, you know. Expand the Brotherhood, we can't do this alone, etc., etc., etc. Um, so there's that, alright? So, the thing with the Brotherhood is that the Brotherhood's kind of a weird... Those of you who don't play Fallout, basically the Brotherhood... Fallout, as you can guess, is a post-apocalypse nuclear survival... Not survival, but role-playing game. And... The idea behind it is that you have all these factions, and one of the factions is the Brotherhood of Steel. And the Brotherhood of Steel are all these guys from who were in the U.S. military originally, um, or at least the the faction's founders were in the U.S. military. I'm gonna light that up. At least the faction's founders were in the military, okay? And they went and said, you know what? This they found some horrible, horrible things happening, and they decided that they were gonna basically split. And um, so they did. They split. They split from U.S. military. The bombs fell, yada, yada, and they became the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood's kind of mission is to <clears throat> gather advanced technology and to ensure that no one's stupid enough to cause the same things that already happened to happen again. 
And the way the Brotherhood tends to do that is by finding advanced technology and stealing it from whoever currently owns it. Which doesn't exactly endear them to everyone else. Um, they get kind of caught up in this whole war with, you know, the, the stuff that kind of happens with the Vault Dweller in the original game and then the, the, the Chosen One in Fallout 2. And it does kind of change their mission objective a little bit. Um, the Brotherhood in the DC game in Fallout 3 is there basically to hunt down the remnants of the big bads from uh, Fallout 1 and 2, roughly. And because they're so diff distant from the rest of the Brotherhood, they've been forced to kind of adapt and bring people in. The thing with the Brotherhood is that players, I think, of the Fallout universe are very pleased. I'm going to kill that turtle because I need to meet. People in the Fallout, players in the Fallout universe are always very odd about having a recognizable quote-unquote good guy. Um, as far as I think a lot of players in Fallout are concerned, there shouldn't be a good guy. There should be a whole lot of less bad guys, basically. Um, which is fine. You know, the game the game has always been about being somewhat conflicted and, and, you know, not knowing really what's going on and who do I side with and who do I not and all this stuff. Uh, on the other hand, I think that it's kind of, they're kind of silly. Um, I, I honestly think that they're really silly. And I think that, that talking about canon in the Fallout universe is a little weird because a lot of players will go from, you know, oh, this is canon, this isn't canon. Are you mate boosted? No. Good. Guess what? There we go. Um, you know, you're... A lot of players in the Fallout universe have this attitude that... Oh, right. I didn't even see the other one there. Well, boys, they're grabbing turtle soup tonight. Hopefully, I don't run out of stone arrows doing this. Let's put them down. Can I repair this thing if it breaks? Yes. This is how you kill these things, by the way. It's it's a little boring, but. Oh, that broke. Hey, there we go. Alright, well, let's get some... Meat, hide, and keratin off these things. There we go. Thank you. Boy, I burned through a lot of arrows doing that. But I think I just got a bunch of meat. Anyways, so, yeah. Um, talking about Canada and the Fallout universe is a bit weird to me because there have been so many games and so many games that were and weren't made and all this sort of stuff that it's always a bit weird. And I'm always thinking, you know, chill out, guys. You know, take a break. Stop paying so much attention to this. And everyone will be fine, you know? Metal ingot created by refining metal ore in a forge. Hip hip hooray. You know, take a take a chill pill, guys. You know, this isn't this isn't the end of the world or huge Oh, I have some spark powder. Okay. So I can make that. Alright, well let's do that then. Um remove nine metal ingots. Uh what else do I need to take out here? Uh the keratin comes out. And we can put the hide away too. There. Okay, perfect. Oh, and the chitin comes out too. There we go. 
All right, well, let's start working on this uh, preserving bin then. So yes, as I was saying, um, I always think it's a bit weird in, in the Fallout universe to start talking about canon. And, well, this doesn't fit the setting. And I'm like, guys, you know, it's Fallout. <sighs> Excuse me. It's it's not like the entire game is, you know, we're not talking about this. this well, it is an interesting world, but we're not talking about, you know, Lord of the Rings here. We're talking about Fallout. We're talking about Pip-Boys and 1950s. 19, we're talking about 1950s meets, you know, sci-fi. Just, it's weird, guys. All right, so when we're talking about canon, we're basically saying anything can happen. You know, we have power armor and nuclear power cars and fission batteries and all this junk. And you guys are going on about how this doesn't fit the canon of the universe. No, no, that did Guys, this doesn't fly, and you know it doesn't fly. Um, I, I think there's a lot of resistance in any fandom to the idea of changing the universe that everyone kind of accepts and acknowledges. And I get that. I really get that, guys. You know, I get I get your issues there. I don't agree with you. I think that in the end, the creators of the universe, the people who have the universe, the ones who get to decide where it goes. And I think in a universe like Fallout, where it's it's limitless. You know, we've explored how much of Fallout? We've explored the American West, D.C., and we're about to explore Boston in Fallout 4. That's it. Th that's all we've done. Like, there's the rest of the whole world to do. I actually heard a really interesting um, idea from someone who is a Brit, actually, who said that they should totally do a Fallout game. All right, so the nice thing about the preserving bin, I'll finish my other thought in a second. Remind me, I'm talking about Fallout. So if you notice the meat in my, that's not the button, the meat in my inventory um, has a spoil time of 17 minutes, right? If I open this thing up and put this in there, along with some spark powder. So now it's a still has 17 minutes, right? Well, now if I come over to here and I open this guy up and I take out some spark powder, which I can't make yet, but next level I'll do that, and throw the spark powder in, Notice how now it says two hours? Right. And the spark powder gets used up very, very slowly. Okay. Like, really slowly. So we aren't going to really have to worry about running out of spark power, any spark power, spark powder, anytime soon. Um, yeah, two hours and 51 minutes, we're fine. So the preserving bin's great for that. I think it can also preserve... I throw my measure berries in there. Yep, 20 minutes. Okay, perfect. Uh, that's great. All right, so what do we need to make now? Let's open... No, that's not the button. Uh, we can make a trike saddle. That's going to require more hide, fiber, and wood. But I don't have a trike yet to do it with. Well, let's start replacing our foundations, actually. Um, stone, wood, thatch. Okay. So, yeah, as I was saying, uh, generally... Where was I? Fallout. Fallout. Um, we've explored a very, very small amount of the Fallout universe, guys. You know, we've explored a tiny amount of the Fallout universe. And I'm interested in seeing where they take us, you know? So the idea I heard from another YouTuber was that they should totally do a Fallout game. Um, they should totally do a Fallout game in Britain. For a bunch of reasons, because it would be really interesting. Because for those of you who don't know, private weapons ownership is actually fairly rare in the UK. Versus in the US, where it feels like every Tom, Dick, and Harry has a gun. Myself included, I assume. Um, whereas in the UK, guns would be very rare. Most of their cops don't have guns. I know, right? As an American, you hear that and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, most of their cops don't have guns. So I'd be very interested to see what that would be like. Because if you think about it, right, that means that it wouldn't be everyone has a gun. It would be a lot of melee weapons, and people who had guns would be incredibly powerful, right? But you'd also be a monumentally large target because everyone wants the gun that you have. So I actually think it would be a lot of fun to sort of play that in that sort of a like, oh, do I want to do use my gun and let everyone know I have it and then have everyone chasing you to try and get a hold of it themselves? Like, I think that would be a lot of fun to play. 
Um, I think some people would probably get driven nuts by it. Um, like this is a Fallout game, why don't I have a gun? But I think it could be kind of cool, you know? I kind of like that role-playing, not really role-playing, but I like the, the unique game mechanics, you know? That's why I like survival games so much, because I like having to look at my food and my hunger and my thirst, which I'm now staring at. Um, you know, I kind of like that. You know, I like those game mechanics. You know, I shot a gun, you know? Maybe do something like what Seven Days to Die does. I shot a gun, now everyone in the area is coming at me to see what's going on. And, you know, to try and maybe take the gun that I have. Because, yeah, I can kill a couple, will injure a couple of them, but, you know, eventually they're going to overwhelm me. You know? So I'd like to see that. Um, I think that would be kind of fun. I think that's a direction that Fallout hasn't really taken. Um, but I think it would be kind of cool to see. Oh, hey, look, nice time. All right, well, we need to stop harvesting that because we need to actually start harvesting. Yeah, I need wood thatch. Okay. Um, I'm sorry for the darkness. I know you guys can't see some darn thing. Let me get my torch out here. Oh, we should probably end the episode anyways. Yeah, we should do that. All right, guys, thank you for watching. This has been Mr. Kassarian. Uh, I've been rambling about Fallout for most of the episode, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I, I love the Fallout series. Um, the only reason I'm not going to actually do a video series on Fallout 3 or New Vegas is simply because you guys probably don't want to see it because that's those are older games. But when uh, Fallout 4 comes out, I'll probably be doing a series on it. Um, actually, if I'm lucky, I may be able to stream it. We'll see. This will be the first time I've ever done a release stream. I'm going to try and take that... Depending on what day it is, all right? Depending on the day, I'm either going to take the night off and then the next morning or just the next morning, all right? If it releases on a day that I work delivery, all right, then in my second job. If it's on a day when I work at my second job, I'm going to have to take the night off because... I will be working until 10, unless it's a midnight release. If it's a midnight release, then I'm just going to take the next day off either way. Um, we'll see. We'll see. And hopefully, if I'm lucky, and if you're lucky, I might stream it for you. I know. Me streaming? Gasp. But yeah, I will try and stream it for you. Anyways, guys, this has been Mr. Kassarian. I want to thank you all for watching. It has been fun as always. I'm sorry for losing both my dinosaurs. I did find a supply cache, which is how I got the cloth and hide armor. Yay. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time. As always, good hunting.